Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I have a very special guest with us. We have Gail Martz, and she's here today to talk about her, her successful business and how she became a success. What was great about Gail is that she took a passion, something she loved, and she turned it into a successful business. Now, today she's here to share those secrets with you, how you could actually take your own passion and turn it into a successful business. So, Gail, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself? I'm so happy you're here today. Welcome to the show. Oh, and thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. And so tell everybody a little about yourself. Well, hello, Stacy. I'm really honored, thrilled, and happy that we are tuned in together. And uh, I had been a, uh, I get, well, it, it was, well, it's called a flight attendant now, but when I was 20 years old, I was a flight attendant, so I was familiar with the world of traveling. I had my education, you know, going along the way and all of that, but I really had that lifestyle back then of being able to travel. And the one thing that I really wanted to accomplish is when you have a pet, being able to take your pet with you. I started with the airplane first. So it's like, how could you take a pet on an airplane? Because it wasn't allowed. It wasn't in the computer system or they didn't even have computer systems at that time no but it's really so I um I thought okay I I have to do this and so I came up with an idea a great idea that I was going to make a bag so that you could travel with your pet now that's a dog that's a cat i'm talking about small animals or it could be you know it's a it could be a puppy you know they can grow into something larger but at least you get that uh, learning process in because dogs cats love a den environment yeah so I created the Sherpa bag, which is a, like you could say, it's a purse for your pet. It's a portable pet den, but it's a home and it can be a home within a home. And I think when uh, you do something, you do anything, first you want to do what you love. Right. So you find what you love and i just loved the animals and the people that loved their animals so much is a community of people with unconditional love because they love their cats their dogs so much and it was like i would be with my uh, sherpa the queen of the empire <laughs> with her someplace and people would look and they would say oh I wish I could take my pet because I had to just start from the very beginning where they didn't even believe uh, that is that safe for a pet yeah. or, oh, is that a punishment for a pet? Nobody got the picture uh, in the beginning. So that's where that education and the awareness comes in. But when you want to do what you love, you must make a commitment. Yes. And the commitment is totally in your heart and your soul. And we have, you know, now we have every single tool we could ever want. You can Google Safari, whatever it is you want to do. Ask a question. Anything that you want to do in Business 101, anything. I mean, tuning in with you. Stacey, this is another opportunity for people to learn. And it's like they want to know, how do you start a business? So what I would say is, first, you must do what you love. And then you want to do your market research and see if there is a void in that marketplace. It could be a service which is really great because there is so there are so many look at the dog walkers 
look at the, you know, whatever it is that has to do with pets. They have, you know, training, whatever it is. But well, go, well, look at the veterinarians. Yeah. You know, I have people that are in school to be doing that as well. And we need more veterinarians. We really do need more. So, yeah. But you could start at anything where you could be a, a vet tech and start the process if it's again if you love the animals and i think the animals bring us so much of that unconditional love it truly is a part of me to share it with uh my beloved uh it's i've had dogs so the dogs uh you know are with me and sherpa was the uh one dog that really changed my whole life and mm-hmm. so it was like oh I had to go I was in New York and I had as the story started my fiance had died and That's you know so it was just it was a real drama of dramas but you couldn't get a pet on a plane yeah hmm. so then my mother Connie who would I have to call her Connie because then she's in, she was in business with me as well so you can't keep calling her mother but then Connie came to uh, back to New York and we drove cross country. Now, why I'm driving while I'm driving cross country, I'm thinking, hmm, because there's Sherpa jumping here, looking out the window in the back. This is all very bad. You cannot do that. It's all about safety with everything that you do. So that's why. You know, I had her in a tote bag, which a tote bag just didn't make it. And I knew that I had to make a bag that would be perfect for the animal with, you know, all the ventilation, all the safety features, everything that you could do, like first start, let's start in our homes and, you know, it's safety at home. Right. And I I think the one thing right now, we have to be very safe. I'll go back to the story, but we have to be very safe because there are fires, there are tornadoes, there are all of these climate catastrophes Mm -hmm. happening and everything else. Yeah. And it's like, uh, as my mother, uh, Connie, would say, you know, you can carry your pet to safety. So I'm dealing with the small cats, dogs, you know, I mean, people, you know, they could carry a 20 pound dog. They'll put them in the, you know, in the bag and have that. I just got a picture. It made me so happy today from a new Sherpa customer saying, oh, she Dia really loves her bag. And it it makes me so happy. I said, you made, you touched my heart. You make me so happy to show me Dia and her bag. It was really wonderful. Yeah. But when we want to do something, find what you love. Yeah. It could be a service and it could be a product, but there needs to be a void in the marketplace if it's a product, because there are so many products at this uh world we're living in uh if i was just at the pet product show there was not one soft-sided pet carrier in the whole world when i started sherpa uh the company and created the sherpa bag not one in the whole world so that's okay I could create a pet carrier. You know, I had to find, uh, well, I worked in the handbag industry. I'm a professional photographer. So I spoke with the uh, president of the handbag association. And I said, I just have to do this. I have to do this. And I said, where, where would I go? And at that time, uh price wise we have to deal with economics in the world and you know where we are at whatever stage we're in but it was impossible to do that in the united states i couldn't right. have done that at that time so it was korea was where i had to begin my business so you have to find you know where if you're doing a product and again there's if you don't do your market research 
total market research, total research on the company, on every single person that you'll be dealing with as well, uh, you're setting yourself up for failure. So do your research first, find a void or service in, you know, product service in the marketplace and then come up with a solution. Right. And there's so many tools that can help us come up with a solution. I could just ask the, the, the Google Chrome or Siri or any of those things, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. Whatever question I have, really, right. it's going to be a question about anything. Yes. And, uh, and we didn't have that when I started my business. And I just had to, uh, you know, it's what I always say. If you do the very best that you can do, you can do no more, but it takes a world. So you can't just do it by yourself and you need help. Like there's the organization score that uh, it helps small businesses. There's so many different things that help small business, but just when you go online, you can help as you know, help yourself as well to the information that's out there and available for you. And for me, it was like there was the biggest void because there was not a pet carrier in the world. So as the uh, it was the head of Petco said uh, that I created a category. So the category I created was the soft-sided pet carrier. So then uh, there was no other pet carrier but the Sherpa bag. And then I, had to, when I had to give it a name, you know, I'm trying to think, what are we going to call this bag? You know, and then it's like, oh, well, everybody thinks Sherpa is so cute. I have to call it the Sherpa <laughs> bag because she's in it. And then I'm a professional photographer, so she was my best model. She really was my very best model. So I, um, you know, so again, then you have to, you know, your idea, and then you make a commitment, but you have to do your research, you know, and yes. the market research to uh, see what is out there. And, and what is the void in the marketplace? that you could provide a solution for right. in the marketplace of service and products or, or in doing what you love, you know? So that's what's so important. I think that's a very good point that you brought up. What is the void? Because a lot of people, they go in and they, they want to cover all these aspects and they have a broad niche when you really have to kind of square into a specific niche. And yours was, soft bags so for dogs to to carry on bags that were soft not hard carry on bags where we that originally have so that was unique you kind of you you narrowed out the niche to one specific thing and that made you unique and i yeah. think that's the thing that where people have to realize is that when you want to be a success you can't try to do everything you have to kind of broaden the new niche. And I think uniqueness is important. How do you feel about that? Oh, totally. But then you have to focus. You have to stay so focused. So when I began, I began with 1,200 medium black Sherpa bags. Now, what's mm -hmm. the most popular color? It's still the black Sherpa bag. But uh, it was like, okay, so I had to pick the, well, I could only do, one, I, I really didn't even have the money to do that. And thank right. God my mother, Connie, uh, uh, you know, helped me with uh, that. And then I, uh, you know, could start my business yeah. with, with that. And then I kept putting every single thing into that company and one of the first things that you want to do when you come up with the, your great idea product service you want to search also i had to you know just check everything out to make yeah. sure it's not out there already right then you know you have to have the name then you have to be able to uh get the message out about the bag that right. i was called the sherpa bag 
So fortunately, I lived in New York City. So in New York City, the, you know, I had the editor of town and country lived right next door to me. Well, her cat needed a bag. Yeah. Oh, I had this person from there. Oh, the dog needed a uh, bag, you know, but people didn't know how to, they, they couldn't get the concept in the beginning. Right. So that's where that education comes in. So I had written up uh, when I first started for every product. Well, okay, here, I think it's good if you could see this. Uh, so oh. I took, uh, so that is the first, like that was before I had even started the business in my bedroom. I took a picture of Sherpa in her Sherpa bag. That is and, so cute. Yeah. And she's on the trunk, you know, the bed's over here, this is over there, there's no room to move. But that's Sherpa. And like she was the best model. And then that picture that because a picture is worth a thousand words and even more. Yes. And so when you have a picture and then you have, you know, all of the um, benefits that are for this bag, because people don't understand getting on a plane is the smallest amount of time things you could do, but that was yeah. the biggest void right there. Cause you could not get a pet on a plane. Yeah. So, yeah. So I had to change the policy on each airline individually and get it into the computer systems, write with them, work with them, deal with them on uh, pets on board. Wow. And, yeah, so that that was really important because uh, it's like, well, they didn't understand, but you have to get, you know, it's good when you go into a room and some, the people have a dog or have a yeah. cat and, you know, then they can understand mm -hmm. why it's so important. And, and then they know the benefits that the animals provide to our life. Right. So, you know, when I'm sitting at the table with the staff and, you know, talking, yeah. going, going over rules, regulations, writing these things. And then they said, yeah, but, but people will sneak their pet on board. I said, no, they will not, you right. know? And, and then that's how it started because you couldn't even get a pet on a plane. So then right. it had to be I, because I had worked in the airline, so that was a benefit, you know, not from, uh, but I, I knew about what the computer systems did and the right. different that they said. And then it was like, uh, as, as we went on through the years, like I just came back from a trip. And so now, now so that people would know there was a pet. You know, I you have love to it. That's a beautiful yeah. bag. Yeah, yeah, this is a toad around town. Uh, but what I had to do now, this is Delta. Delta was the last airlines I changed the policy on. But then uh, I worked with them and I worked with them on, uh, you know, the policies and procedures, blah, blah, blah. And then how they could identify you must you know, you cannot sneak a dog on. You cannot do, remember people were doing those fake emotional support dogs, yes. you know, they have the horse, the yep. pig, the snake, you know, whatever it was. <laughs> no, but I mean, they did that. They abused. They abused the, it, yeah. And they did. And then they set us way back from all I had done. But when I just got back Saturday night, so I was flying from Orlando to California, and you must make a reservation. Let's 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 deal with it on a plane, and then we'll go back to different things. This comes into rules and regulations. Right. When you're finding a solution, you can't just pop a bag out and not have written material so people can understand yes. how to train their pet. How to train? You know, it's like people need training. Like we need training. Like yeah. like you you and I both need training. You never I'm, stop learning. You really don't. I, you know, I just no. recently I've been taking courses to enhance myself because you, with when as time goes on, 
things change. So you have to constantly be on the ball. You have to constantly, you know, reteach yourself or broaden, you know, yourself to new ideas because the world is constantly, it's a change in place and you can't be stuck in one train of thought. You have to move and evolve with the world itself. Well, we have to look at what's going on right now. So it's like, so I'm going to go with, okay, so here's the Sherpa bag. Well, number one, you want to be able to take your pet with you. Yes. I just would be walking down the street with Sherpa in her bag. I don't have to, you know, do other things. And and then I want to be able to go, you know, wherever it is that I'm going so it was right into Bloomingdale's and Saks Fifth Avenue. And then they bought the bag in the beginning. So I started out on the high end. So I right. started out, you know, it was a uh, Hallmacher Schlemmer was right down the street. They put the bag in. Bloomingdale's was two, three blocks away. Macy's was that. And then I had to go in and work with them, you know, but I had to write the things up. Like I would be, oh, it's Friday, it's Saturday, it's Sunday, it's whatever it is, but I must do this because yeah. I made a commitment and I know that people love their pets so much. And I wanted them to be able to take their pet if it's in a car, yeah. if it's on a plane, or I, I want right now, the most important thing is safety at home because the home is not safe anymore with these tornadoes, floods, fires. What are all these other things that keep happening? You know, it's, it's like crazy. Yeah. You just go over the list of things and like they were showing, I don't want to watch the news, but you'd yeah. have to. And they're showing what the tornado did. Now, what do you think happened? to those little dogs and the little cats and the yeah. little kittens and the big ones and all of that. If you don't have a safe uh, den environment that you can take with you, you should think about that as well. Right. Because yeah. it's like, uh, and you wanna familiarize them with this pleasant experience, not just push them in the bag. No. And Expect them to love it, but make it so it's something that is rewarding and and fun and enjoyable. And then they know they get to be with you. But it, you don't even have to leave the home because yeah. I think when we're let's let's deal with today's world. I mean, I'm going to talk about how I started, you know, finding a manufacturer and do all of that. But we're in today's world. So we have to, I think we want to help our uh, listeners to realize that this void in this marketplace today is being safe. That's you exactly it. I think you hit it on the ball because I think yeah. when animals, you know, they, they, when they look at something and they feel safe, that's their safe zone, their safe spot. You know, yeah. even when I was crate training my dogs, they, I yes. had a really nice crate and they yeah. knew they actually liked going in it. And then they even did. if they had a little accident, I would say, what did you do? And they'd run into the crate because they knew they did something they weren't supposed to, but they felt yeah. safe in the crate and it, yeah. they go to where they feel safe. And they, that's, that's their safe zone is, is, the, is your bag. Or that den environment. That so, den environment, uh, yes. When I started, I became, you know, I marketed myself as the alternative to the hard plastic carrier mm -hmm. because that was the only thing that was out on the marketplace was the hard plastic carrier. Right. But at that period of time, even luggage, you know, because I'm big in that area as well. But luggage had gone from hard to soft right. and and it's so much lighter weight. And then you have, you know, like I said, you know, I always like to have the pockets and then you have to have the ventilation. You have the safety feature. You know, I do everything for the safety, yeah. the comfort, safety. For, safety has to come first. You know, that's first. And it's comfortable. And then, of course, it had to be stylish, you know, because yeah. I always 
focused on that as well. So uh, so that was like the toad around him. But I think when, I'm going to put this over here. When we had Sherpa in the original Sherpa bag, and then, uh, okay, well, there she goes. She had to do every single thing with me. And that was how we got into the stores, which, you know, are you going into the stores? Because now look at what we have in the world. We have Amazon. We have Shopify. We have all these different platforms that you can go to and find out things, do things. All these websites, uh, let's just say, I'm going to talk about pets for a minute. Uh, there's different uh, companies that sell pet products. I mean, right. you know, of course, you know, that's like, so I was in Petco and PetSmart, but then I was in the high-end boutiques and then I was in the the Ritz Hotel, you know. So I, I went, you know, I had like the different markets for the bag. That, right. that That's one of the things to do. And I believe in uh, writing down and then I also now, you know, I record as well, but I really like to sit there and document and write about it like, oh, OK, here is, uh, you know, what am I going to call the bag? You know, but I mean, the Sherpa bag, it had to be named after Sherpa the dog. Yeah. And then and then what are all the benefits that come with the bag? And, you know, and what is what does the bag do? And uh, yeah, and then I said, it also makes a fashionable tote for you because whatever I do, even if you don't have a pet, you're gonna use that tote bag because it's it's it works for me and it right. works for people that need bags. So, uh, so I think what we're helping people to do, again, first we said, do what you love. Mm -hmm. But first, I think you better do your market research. You know, find something that you love. A hundred percent. Service product, whatever it is. And there's so many services that are needed uh, in this day and age right now, you know, yes. with, you know, and then, oh, okay, well, what's the void in the marketplace? I was, whenever I was where I was, I was watching, you know, I had Shark Tank on at night. I also watched that and Connie, mother, mm -hmm. uh, and I would watch that as well because it's really interesting. And you learn from people that have nothing, came up with an idea, and maybe they still will have nothing, or maybe they'll do something really great. Yeah. So, and what did they do? They did what they loved. They found a solution. They found a void. They found something that could help to make our lives better. So my focus had to be with the dogs and the cats and the people, my community of people that love their pets so much. Yes. And I, I think I also realized, you know, from from working with so many people and even coaching so many people, a lot of people that go into business, they're impatient and they expect, you know, that success will come overnight and they get antsy when they start, they don't see results the first three months. Well, it takes time. It's just, I, you know, one of the greatest mentors of mine, you know, kind of use an example is think of a, a jar and then you put the big rocks on the bottom. But then after you get the big rocks on the bottom, you have to get the medium sized rocks. Then you got to get the pebbles. Then you got to get the sand to put on top. And that all takes time. What's what's your yeah. conception? What's your idea about that? Well, no, but it really is because that's why when you make a commitment, okay, I must do this, you know, so I, I write down, uh, you know, let's just say with the Sherpa bag. Now I need to make it, uh, safe, comfortable, stylish. But then I had to change policies on the airlines because people would fly on an airplane and you couldn't get your pet on an airplane. So then I had to change the policies on each airline individually and work with them, rules, regulations, everything. And then the fee that was involved. Now, this is hysterical because then I wrote, you know, I think it should always provide material 
So Sherpa would write travel tales, T-A-I-L-S. And you know, <laughs> she would talk about uh, you know, what it was. And then the thing was at that time when I first did this, it was $45 to get your pet on the plane. Yep. Underneath the seat in yes. front of you. Yeah. Where they must stay for the duration of the flight. And right. when I see people abusing this, it makes me uh, you know, or walking yeah. their dogs around a terminal or doing things. You should never do that. You if you then you jeopardize, you've already jeopardized with all those fake emotional support dogs, you've already jeopardized it. And everybody really does. Yeah, They love their pet, the unconditionally loving relationship you have with your cat or your dog. You right. love them so much. And so I, I want to have the community that I work with that believes in it and loves their pets and wants to be able to help as well. You right. Know, the, that like the veterinarians, look what they do. Yeah. But then I had to teach the veterinarian. I had to go to my markets. Okay, what were my markets? The one was, uh, well, it was easy. The one was the groomers. Mm -hmm. So I had to, my Connie would do these uh, mailing lit Cause you know, that was the, if you can imagine, oh, that's so terrible to date yourself that way. But you know, we would send things by mail, thousands yeah. and thousands and thousands by mail. Now it's so easy on the computer. You check it out and then you do it out and uh, you can uh, get everything onto where it needs to be right. by what tools we have with our computer systems and all the different programs, the database, the contacts. And all of that. So I had stores in uh, the U.S., of course. And then I was in Europe because I was a flight attendant. Yeah. It was called a hostess. It was so long ago. But, <laughs> <laughs> but things changed. Uh, but then when the guys came in, you know, five years after that, then they changed it to flight attendants. But, you know, so over in Europe, I wanted, well, I had to be in Europe as well. They're so free with their animals over there. Yes, they're all they are. over, they're all over the place. You want to go to dinner, take your dog. It's okay. Your dog can be right next to you. You know, Coco would be right next to me in her bag. Everybody knew that it was not, it's not a big deal because it wasn't something that went against the, uh, anything that would be detrimental. It worked perfectly. So you you have to do that educational product a process. So Sherpa wrote travel tales from her perspective, you know, and you know, she'd say, Yeah, I have to pay forty-five dollars and those bulky bags get on for free. Like, you know, she had to go underneath the seat in front of me, where you must remain for the duration of the flight. They don't come out and start doing things at all. And you have to talk to your pet. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's like there's what this is this is like it's like you're part of you. And in order for them to know you want to talk with them. Now, what is the association? So you know it's with you associate with the positive experience. Right. With them. it's a way of association so that they understand. Right. Oh, this is great. Like this little Coco that's here. She's like, okay. Oh, she saw that I was getting dressed and uh, okay, well, I think maybe we're going to be going somewhere and she'll dive into her sherpa bag oh because, that's so funny oh no because she wants to go you i know? know but it's just so cute it's like they know and they do it you know, it's just, yeah it's a kick out of it no but you know the thing is also again uh okay so another example uh like there was construction going on and why do they have to be frightened by that noise and that banging and whatever because they have a den environment that they feel safe and secure in. Right. So then go in, they go into their Sherpa bag and then they could be safe and secure 
because you make it that safe, secure, portable pet den, or or like you said, with the hard plastic uh, crates, it, whatever it is, it's, right. it's secure for them. But if you're in one of these areas that you have to get out immediately, you really must prepare yourself and look at what the world is today. Right. So when starting a business, again, do what you love, find a void in the marketplace, do all your research, and then start the process of, well, you have to have a name. Right. You have to write, you know, you have to write all of the thing. I'm going to just use myself as an example because mm -hmm. I had to write the things so that people would understand uh, that, oh, she travels a great deal by cab and bus in my native New York. Mm -hmm. And so does my young protege. So she's Sherpa. It wrote, I, I still like to do that. You know, I right. really like to do that. But now it's Coco. So Sherpa, you know, it's always will, you know, Sherpa is the queen of the empire started with her. But yeah. then each dog as it comes along. Oh, here is now it has to be Coco, because when we were discussing you only get them for this short amount of time. So you want to make it the very best that you can make that yes. time and, you know, have them be the best that they can be. So one day we can take our pets wherever we go. I'm hoping yes. that's what I work towards in my life. Well, it looks like you're getting there and you've come a long way. And that's what I like is that you show all these different things, all these different stages you had to go through to get your your business to this level of success. So it doesn't happen overnight. And people, when they have an idea, they have to be patient and they have to do it the right way. And it's going to take time. So, you know, I think people have to, you know, I, I like the point where you show them all the different stages you had to go through to get yeah. to this point in your life. So people have to really understand the intensity and the hard work that goes into a business. And, you know, the one thing we were talking about before that we started the podcast, we were talking about how our businesses become our baby. And sometimes we live, breathe and think it. And, you know, the one thing I think we have to realize too, is I've spoken with other people about it is sometimes we have to know when to stop so we could prevent burnout from occurring. Because oh some... yeah, I just listened to that. Uh, I just was listening to that. You know that the, the burnout. You know on yeah. what it is, and and that's why it's like okay. Well, here's uh, here's what you have to do. You and you want to keep learning, continuously keep learning, researching the marketplace. But again, if you do what you're love with the I say do what you love in the places you love with the people and the pets that you love and so then now I'm here in uh, San Clemente okay well she's gonna do you know we have a car so you, you have a car and she'll be safely secured in her bag and she will go everywhere with me right you know, that she can go. There's yes. no place that I would go that she can't go with me because why would I go there then? Right. So, and it to be very, very discreet. You know, you have to understand also there are people, I don't know anybody, that don't like pets. There are people. So yeah. you, you must be aware of the world. And when I say keep a low profile, I don't want to see those dogs cats out of the bag running around doing anything like that because there are people that do not like them right and there are people that are allergic to them so yes. that's one of the things you know I mean so take plane travel that was first so you you also want to make sure that no one is allergic even though the pet stays in the bag underneath the seat but right. you know you want to let the and my uh Look, Coco, they said, we don't hear a peep. I said, you will never hear anything from her because she's trained not to do that. You can't right. have a barking bag, you know? So 
what would a barking bag be on it? It's not good to have. So, no. you know, so train, you know, do again, we, we, people want to start a business it does not have to be in the pet world. It, do a service, do something that is an avoid, look for a void, something you can't find and, and go to your computer and it will really tell you yeah. like, oh, OK, uh, how many of these places or what days is it open? And everything is online now. So you've got every single tool that you can, but you must make a commitment stay totally focused on that and everybody's going to keep throwing you all these different things like well why don't you do this well why don't you do that and i had to stay focused you know yes. i had to stay focused on the original sherpa bag okay well i did it in this but i wanted to be able to uh i worked in the automotive industry i went to detroit um, and it was, uh, actually they called me and then I went to Detroit to work, uh, with the, um, automotive industry on pet occupant safety. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're dealing with that, that's far bigger than on a plane, right? Because if you see these dogs, you're never going to see a cat doing this anyway, uh, hanging their heads out the window. That is the worst thing that they could do because number one, they're not secured into the seat. Yes. With a harness, a bag, and then they've got their head where all that flying debris is coming out. Oh, okay. Then you've got to step on the brakes because something happened in front of you. That dog becomes Ooh. a projectile and goes right through the window. And look what you've done because yeah. you did not think about the safety. And, you know, now we have to wear seatbelts. God, I mean, heaven forbid you don't have a yeah. seatbelt, but you must do that for your pet also. Well, even Not a him. jerk, you know, like a, like a, they could get whiplash. They can get anything humans get, you know, if they're going forward and backward and anything yeah. can happen. Oh no. So they've got to be secured. Now they make all the harnesses for securing a pet, you know, with that, like we have the big dogs, you know, big cats, whatever. Uh, so they make the harnesses. So you secure them in because if you do not uh, in a bag, in a harness with whatever they become a projectile and and if they're in the front that which is you know then that's the end of that it's right. really the end of that story so safety really comes in to everything that we're dealing with so when you design when you come up with this idea uh i think we better look at what's happening in the world today again and go back to the same formula do what you love really do what you love, and, yeah. but make sure there's a void in the marketplace and something that you can do that will help others yeah. is going to help, you know, because it's like, I need help with these different things. Well, I need help with my dog with these different things, you know, right. so, you know, so find out what a void is. So when you're telling me your Shih Tzu's and, and you have those, well, okay, uh, there's a training element. You know, the yes. training element is something that can always be improved upon yes. and worked on uh, because it's a life keeps changing and we have to keep changing and growing with it. Yes. Don't they say that's the. Uh, the one that's inevitable that, uh, well, everything, everything must change. You know, it's inevitable change is the, you know, continuous. And that's why we have to look at our marketplace and do the research. And you can get like, well, here's the statistics. I want to know how many dogs and cats are in the United States. How many dogs and cats are in Europe? You know, whatever it is. Right. And then you know, the different things. So I really think safety at home, it's at this time of our life, what I did starting a business, 
it was a void in the marketplace. Yes. There was no soft sided pet carrier. So I created the category of the soft sided, the Sherpa bag, the officially approved soft sided pet carrier because I changed the policy on the airlines. It was official. It right. was in the computer system. And uh, you had to be able to say that because then like people, they just didn't even know that. And so people would carry in the beginning because I have another, like I Sherpa wrote travel tales and I wrote travel tips. And then I had all the tips, you know, to help people. And then on the back of that, I had the airlines I had changed the policy on. And when I would change a policy on another airline, I felt like I had graduated with honors because, I mean, that to me it's was a hard really, task. It was really, it was not easy and no. nothing is easy. And you really, when you say, and that's why I say do what you love, but you must do what you love, make a com and make a total commitment. And if you, you know, because we can work on our computers now and it's like, you know, just write what you're writing. Right. Oh, well, excuse me. You know what I use the most? I have my iPhone. Well, I have two, more than one iPhone and I live with these because I have to photograph. I am a professional photographer, but I must always photograph and then I will look at something like in the beginning, you know, and then you see, oh, I was in fashion. So, you know, it's like, what's a detail that's right. different? You know, what's a color? Like, oh, okay, what are they showing in colors and fabrics and designs and things? And fashion really uh, was always a big part of what I did as yeah. well. So, you know, it was, uh, it doesn't have to be stylish when you're doing, you know, whatever you're doing. It, it, but, you know, if you're doing a product and something for a person or anything, you, yeah. you definitely have that factor involved. That's so. great. Where can people find, where's the easiest place they can find these bags? Well, you can go online. So you would uh, just go into your Google Safari, any of that, and you would say the Sherpa bag. And then it gives you all of these places that sell the Sherpa bag. So because I started in Petco and PetSmart and I'm still in Petco and PetSmart, other people have the company now and I stay mainly with the educational portion of helping people so they can help to make the world a better place. That's yeah. the goal is because we want to do that. So got, I, I think you find everything online. So to say the Sherpa Bay, oh, okay. Oh, Chewy has it. Amazon has it. Well, Amazon knocks out everybody. Well, that's the other thing because they will copy you. So, yeah. you know, you have to do what you do with your registrations. You know, you do everything. I work with attorneys. At, like in the beginning, I had to make sure, you know, I didn't have any money. I didn't have any home. I didn't have any job. I started at the lowest place, but I was grateful because I had a fabulous mother that family in California and fabulous friends. And then I I just, I had to do this. I knew yeah. I had to do it. And it, it's my, it, this is my life. So I'm clearly doing what I know I'm meant to do. And being with you today, I mean, now that we got connected, uh, yeah. it's like, it's so important if we can help one person to think of one thing that yeah. can help them to do what they love and get started. Do you have a website that people could visit? Oh yes, it's uh Gail Mart. Oh yeah, it's Gail Mart, G A Y L E M A R T C dot com. And do you have any blogs or anything on there that people can be informed about any type of information or anything? Yes, they can go on. And I think I should be really working on that because it has to be even better. And remember, it takes a world. It's not going to be just you that's doing these different. I mean, in the beginning, you don't have a choice. I mean, yeah. when, when I started, like in my bedroom, there were boxes in New York City, you know, all the way up to the ceiling in my bedroom. <laughs> and the doorman was so great because, you know, we weren't allowed to do this, but he would help me 
unload the boxes, get them up to my apartment. And then I have photos from the beginning of, you know, all the boxes. And then I had to do my photographs, but a yeah. photo's worth a thousand words. So I, I was going to say, the, yeah. I think the copy that you write and the things that you do, and then we just want to help uh, to make the world a better place. And that comes by working with the people and helping them to learn. So being with you today is a great opportunity because we reach all of your listeners. Right. And I think, you know, I think people and have, a, yeah. And people, people, I think have a, you know, great opportunity now to understand that they have the opportunity to take a, their passion and turn it into a successful business. And I'm so glad you came on the show today because you actually gave such valuable information and you gave step-by-step -step information that if people follow, they really will, you know, accomplish a, a successful business. And that exactly. it, 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 it's really so true, but I want to make sure there's another thing that you do. You could do it all on the computer. Now, this is how, this is how we Connie, but you know, this 39 cent ledger, that's all it was back then, but it was like page by page, you know, and then it had the pricing. And then now this is very exciting for me. If I go to this book and it will tell me this month and then it will tell me, oh my gosh, look at where I was in the beginning of when I started. Here was exactly what the price was. Here was my first cost. Here was my landed cost. And then what are you going to sell it for? So that's, again, where you do your research, look right. at the market and find out the pricing. Because if your pricing isn't what it's supposed to be, and then you've got to document everything, you know, mm -hmm. document because the expenses, your time, everything that you're doing is building what is your dream, your vision. Yes. Definitely. To help the world. So choose, you know, what you can do in a service or a product or yes. anything that you like you and I talking today. Well, hopefully we're reaching people that we can help and uh, they can do what they love. Yeah. yeah. With their, with their lo loving, loyal companions. Yes. Yes. And which is very important. Thank it you. truly is. It is. It really is. You know, dogs and cats and animals bring so much love unconditionally. And it really, it brings, it, they bring true happiness internally and externally. So, yeah. you know, but I like the fact that you show people how you got to this point and how you show people it is possible to have dreams and make your dreams your reality. So thank you so much, Gail, for coming on this show. You provided our listeners with such valuable information and I wish you the best of luck and I give you kudos for all the accomplishments you've achieved all these years you've gone you 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 started with nothing and you've gotten to a huge success and that's a, a great accomplishment and thank you so much for being on the show thank you Stacy it's been truly a delight I really appreciate our time together me too me too you have a great day you too